where do people go to when they have a problem with vulture funds? And I'll just give you one instance, and you might just tell me where somebody like this would go to. So she has the vulture fund, uh, you know, calling to the house, uh, ringing all the time, harassing all the time. They uh, bought a, had bought a second property. Um, and then it's the case of, well, I'll stop harassing you if you sign over your house, your family home. And sure, then you'll be fine because we won't bother you anymore. Um, you, you can live in it for as long as you're alive and when you're dead, we'll take it over. So that's your, that is the solution that's being provided. So what would you say to that woman? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that no vulture fund should be dealing directly with a consumer at all. That's prohibited. The, uh, but they shouldn't, sorry, if it's a buy to let, they shouldn't be dealing with um, you directly. Um, they can only operate in the legislative framework through um, the regulated entity and they can't uh, operate directly. So if that's happening, that should not be happening. And the protections, um, even if it's a, a buy-to-let, for example, where they own more than one property, mm. if that's mm. the situation yeah. we're talking about, the protections of the Consumer um, Protection Code um, would not permit harassing behaviours uh, or threatening or menacing behaviours, that it would not be permitted in a way of engaging with the consumer. The approach even um, with respect to a buy-to-let uh, and if it's in addition to their, their family home, um, the aim of the engagement that the code envisages is um, a constructive engagement to assist um, to come to a, a resolution of that and there may be cases where unfortunately it is a sustain, unsustainable situation but none of the behaviours should be um, threatening or menacing or harassing if, if, if they're the kind See, of behaviours that you're describing. The problem is, I suppose, that a lot of this isn't written down. So a lot of it is done ver verbally. So how do you then in your investigations know any of that that's happening when things are done verbally and it's the the property owner's word against the the vulture fund or the regulated entity, whichever. We take um, many sources when we go at, at, and look at um, a situation. We'll obviously go out on site and look there too. But if you have information um, from somebody who is saying that these behaviours occurred, we take that into account. Um, and we take our uh, information from lots of different sources when we go and look at a problem. It's very typical for us to receive information from multiple sources to inform our view on whether there's a problem or not. It's not just one line of information. So uh, that's how we inform our views. Do you make it mandatory for the, um, the agent, the, the, the vulture fund, to inform um, the people they're dealing with of their rights? Or where do they get that information? I think there's a lot of confusion out there as to what people's rights are and whose responsibility it is to make sure that those rights are upheld. So when a when a book is sold, if it goes to the unregulated loan owner, there, there is, if it's been sold by a regulated entity, they do have to inform the consumers where the, the loan is going to, mm. and then the unregulated entity has to appoint a regulated entity mm. to, to actually be that interface mm. between it and the consumer. Mm. So in the scenario you gave, I'm not sure if you're talking about the unregulated entity dealing directly with the consumer or whether it was the credit servicing firm. Because if it's the credit servicing firm, we have access, we are on site, we are looking at how they're engaging with consumers. Right, but, but people should contact yourselves in terms of individual cases of where all of those codes have been reached. Anyone in distress mm. absolutely should be availing of all of the advisory services mm. available to them, I mean through Mavs, Awalia and so on. Mm. Uh, people uh, should not be dealing with uh, uh, the, um, the creditor in an unadvised way. You know, yeah. so for, of course, when you're in that situation, uh, when, as you say, it's someone uh, directly um, uh, encountering so we, where they don't have the expertise or the knowledge to know what, what mm. is appropriate, what is not. I mean, I think there's a very important role for advisors, including the uh, publicly funded advisory service. So people should not uh, feel uh, this. Uh, they should deal with this on their own. They should absolutely use the advisory services that are available.